this age How are them man still hating? My young boy in a different country But he ain't never been on vacation One hand on a girl Welcome back to Bolly Belly TV It's been over a year since we was last at Valley Lakes And we should have produced this video a lot sooner But a lot of things have happened this year And we just haven't been able to get it out If you haven't already seen part one of our Valley Lakes trip Make sure you check that out this is part two and we're going into Thursday and what's additionally known as Big Fish Thursday. The first part of our week was an incredible week and the latter part is going to be no exception. So another really windy morning, wind pushing down our end of the lake. Sun's just finished coming up and uh, Dean's managed to put another one on the bank. So we'll pack up in a minute and go around, go around and see what he's got. It seems to be that the fish are, well the fish have been coming out at either end of the lake. They're not really holding up much in the middle. There's a big weed bed up one end up near peg, up near peg nine, which seems to be holding the fish. And the wind is pushing far down into peg 12, which seems to be pushing some of the fish down towards Dean down in 12. Everywhere else on the lake has been pretty quiet really. Myself, I haven't even had a knock yet. Kenny had one at the start of the week, and Mark had a couple at the start of the week as well. Hopefully, um, the wind will hopefully bring them fish down and out of the weed, and under the cover of darkness, maybe some of them fish will venture out and try and find some of my spots. I think today what I'm gonna do is just trickle a little bit more bait in, put a few spoms out of just, just liquid, um, just try and get that scent running through the water column, through their gills and I might start getting their heads down on, uh, on some of my spots. But I think I've been a little bit optimistic. I don't think my chances are in this week, I really don't think it's going to happen. Because I think the two guys at the end of the lake are, uh, are definitely in the better positions. Right, I'm going to finish my tea, pack my camera gear up and we'll go and see what Dean's got. Two and a half wet. So the sling weighs two and a half wet, and you reckon it's just touching 40? I reckon it's a 40. It is a 40? Yeah. It's about 49. We'll call it 49, bang on. 49. 49. Get in. <laughs> well, Get in. Done. Let's put a smile on my face. <laughs> well, good morning. It's Thursday morning on Valley Lakes. Fishing swim 12. Um, had a couple this morning, both from the same spot. About 14 wraps over to the tree you can see on the far margin. Um, fished over probably a kilo and a half, two kilos of boilies uh, with a pink pop up on the Ronnie rig. Well, that's the first one of the two. Caught over from the far margin, over a bed of boily, uh, fish just a pink pop up. Forty nine on the nose. I've got it holding it, haven't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, you Now it's the next one. Straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Right, this is the second of the two fish caught over from the far margin over a bed of boilies and with a pink pop up. 40 pound, 8 ounces. He's gone. He's gone. My arms are f Well done. <laughs> we got there. Now, it's like having a bag of cement out in your hands. Let's come this way. The biggest mistake I see people make coming out of France is that they need to do something different. And it's, you don't, you can use the same rigs, the same rods, the same baiting approach as you do at home. It's something you feel confident in. If you're using a certain bait at home and you have confidence in that bait, then use that bait abroad. There's no, oh, this bait it only works on that water. A good bait will always work on all waters. It just, you know, any bait works. Um, the second the second problem I see most people see is, is that the sun will come up and they'll be out with the spawn out with the spawn putting bait on top of fish showing to me that's a big no-no if the fish are showing and they're on your area just sit on your hands just really sit on your hands if the rods don't go off after they've moved off then reel the rods in check that the rigs are working and and then put a little bit of bait in it's don't you don't have to make it harder than it actually already is So that sun is just starting to go down. It's been another really long day for me. A couple of really nice fish out this morning by Dean. Uh, and then this afternoon we just had a bit of a play around with the drone, trying to get some footage of uh, these elusive white fish that are in Valley Lakes too. And we worked out there's about a dozen of them sort of milling around in a group uh, and no one's caught them. So we wanted to know exactly what they were and we've sort of been dropping the drone over the top of them and trying to put a underwater camera on them, but still we're undecisive of what they are so if you've got any ideas please drop a comment below and uh, see what you think ideas suggestions are more than welcome of what type of fish they are um, big fish Thursday still plenty of time to pull out a big one Dean's I think on the right idea in peg 12 he's fishing up close to a snag and it's looking promising for a bite for him so fingers crossed in the morning we'll have something nice to show you Myself, on the other hand, lost that one earlier to the snag, so absolutely gutted about that. But the spirits are still high. The wind is blowing hard down this end of the lake, and uh, fingers are looking good for a bite. All right, we'll catch up with you again in the morning.
Peg, peg 12, it's got my name written all over it. Uh, margins to fish to, overhanging trees, snags. Also obviously at the end of a lake. Definitely in my comfort zone. It's, it's where I'd place myself on any lake. 49 pound mirror. That come out yesterday morning. Come out a little small pink pop up. Fished over to uh, overhanging tree. 50 yards out. I'm putting out probably two to three kilos a day over the spots I'm fishing. Um, rigs have just been a Ronnie rig doing the trick with a uh, pink pop up on. About a seven inch. Sum it up to be along the lines of an English lake. Typical English gravel pit with a good head of carp. Well, I suppose the average, looking around the sort of 40 pound mark. Um, the smallest one I've caught so far is 30, uh, biggest is 49. And there's plenty bigger in here. Yeah. Um, what makes it even better, it's an hour drive from Calais, just over an hour's drive from Calais. Good morning, it's Friday morning and it's our last full day fishing today. We've got one more day, one more night, so there's still plenty of time for me to put a fish on the bank. Alex and Dean fishing out at the other ends of the lake in pegs 9 and 12. We've been fishing really well this week, up to fish up to 49 pounds, so well done guys. It's obvious that the fish are holding up at the ends of the lake. One end of the lake has a massive weed bed and I think the fish are still holding up in there. Down the other end of the lake the wind's been pushing into pretty much all week, so I think the fish have been following the wind as well. Right, I'm going to finish my breakfast, reel my rods in, and then I'm going to go and have a chat with Kenny and see what approach he's taken this week on the lake. So, I'm just going to do a little rig. Um, struggling this week, I had that first fish on the Sunday afternoon um, and not had anything since. So, a new rig, just tie one up. I'll do something slightly different with my rig. Um, it's still a, it's a blowback, fishing a snowman, but it's stripped all the way from the actual uh, small o-ring all the way down to the hair and leaving this bit from the actual o-ring down to the shank stiff. So you can actually when it blows back it's actually stiff and also if it rejects um, it resets itself so you don't have this case of the, the little bit of silicone there you know <coughs> pushing all the way back so basically what I'm going to do <coughs> is just literally cut a little bit off this pop up and cut a little bit off the, uh, the bottom bait Um, just so it sits a little bit better, a bit more critically balanced. I don't have them wafting in their faces. I just want them to the bait to actually mask the mask the hook effectively. It doesn't have to be precise and neat. The carp don't care. And uh, one thing you'll notice that on, on here, just this little bit here, is a, it's a float stop. So basically, if you make this hair too short, so it only goes through the actual pop-up element, you'll find that the bottom bait will actually slide back down the actual hook, the, um, the hair itself. So that stops there, just, you can slide it up, so it actually stops the bait bottom bait from actually sliding. So, all the fingers and thumbs. Right, so I'm just going to pull this up. And 
and you'll notice the, the separation there and I just literally slide that float stop up against it so you, it doesn't slide back down the uh, the hair and uh, this one's going to be attached to a quick link and um, we'll put it back out and we'll see what we can we'll see what we can have so this is what I meant by the if you do a too shorter hair in the actual hair itself so you can actually see there that the knot is only just pulled through the the pop-up itself but when you pull the actual pop-up up and slide that bead little uh, rubber float stop up you can see that it locks into place you can see it's a uh, even though I've not cut it perfectly straight it still sits it's going to sit just like that on the bottom That final afternoon we decided to wind in our rods and all go and meet up at the clubhouse for one final social. I've fished a lot of places in Europe and I've been to a lot of different venues and Valley Lakes has to offer some of the best facilities that I've come across. Each lake has a decent sized clubhouse with everything that you're going to need for the week from plenty of freezer space, running hot water and some really new de decked out showers and toilet facilities. Each lake as well as a small tackle shop selling small amounts of end tackle and plenty of bait to keep you going through the week. That last evening we thought we'd have a home cooked meal cooked by the resident chef. So we enjoyed our last meal together as a group having a good laugh and a chat about the week that we've just had. We knew that the last night's fishing was going to be hard because it was going to be exceptionally cold and boy we wasn't wrong. It was an exceptionally cold night that night and unfortunately no one managed one final fish. I was hoping to get one more to show before we left but the cold absolutely killed it for us. After a cold pack down and finally getting our gear away in the vans we went and all met up again at the clubhouse just to say our farewells to the owners and also to do a bit of a prize giving. We gave away a couple of little prizes for Alex's new PB common and Dean who had caught the most amount of fish. I want to say a big thanks to Valley Lakes for letting us fish this week. We managed to fish really well and pulled out some absolute crackers. Congratulations to Alex with his new PB common and Dean for catching that absolutely banging 49 pound mirror. I cannot wait to get back to Valley and fish again as I've now got a score to settle having blank this week. Right, don't forget to subscribe to us on all of our channels and make sure you check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Boily Belly TV.